Evelyn, ask Chris which new song he's looking forward to playing the most live. I mean, I'm I'm kind of looking forward to it all, really. I mean, it's 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 kind of difficult to to pinpoint one song because you know they're all so different. You know, it was great playing Survival at the Olympics. I think that's one that will will go down well live. I think maybe um, Supremacy, the first the first song off the new album. You know, that's a good good heavy sort of traditional rock track. You know, so uh, I think that's something that will will kick off live. Which, you know, it's always the it's always the songs that make the crowd kick off that that you enjoy the most. You know, it's not necessarily the songs that you see as your favourites. You know, when you you know there are songs that I have you know favourites on the album um, that that aren't necessarily the best songs to play live. You know, and uh, you know from our point of view, when you see a crowd jumping up and down, that's that's what it's all about. And you know that's why songs like Plugging Baby are still in the set after twelve yeah. years because. Because people love it, you know, and we love to see people enjoying themselves. And you know, songs like "Plugging Baby," "Time Is Running Out," "Newborn," you know, they're songs that that just get the crowd up. And you know, when the crowd's up, we're up. You know, you know, we always try and rotate the set a little bit. Um, but you know, there are certain songs that are, are are being pretty much in there every night. And you know, like I said, it's 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 all about the crowd. You know, it's just, it's the same with anything. You know, it's uh, you know, if the crowd aren't enjoying it, you know, it's it's a pointless exercise. Really, there's no point in going and playing. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, those moments where you look out and you can just see a sea of people jumping up and down in unison, you know, that's that's what you dream about when you're a kid, you know, playing guitar in your bedroom. You just want to see this mosh of 18,000 people going crazy, you know? Yeah. Survival has been written with the athletes in mind or for the all-human race. Um, I mean, I think with any song, you know, they're, they're always open to interpretation, you know, and I, I don't think it's... Uh, you know, you can write a song about something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it has to be about to everybody, you know. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the whole way that the Olympics thing came up was, you know, when we first started making the album, you know, they approached us, they, they wanted us involved in some way, and we weren't really sure how they wanted us involved, and, and the whole thing went quiet. But I think it maybe planted a, a, a seed when it came to writing some lyrics for Matt and... Uh, I think that's maybe where the inspiration for the song came. But, you know, I, I must admit, when I first heard heard it, I, I my take on it was a much, tar- a much darker take, you know. I didn't necessarily relate it directly to being an athlete or a sports person. I, I related it more to, I don't know, some dark banker who's just in it for himself, you know, and just, yeah, I, I kind of almost saw more of a kind of greed element in it rather than a competitive element. <clears throat> um and it was very much a song that I think, you know, it, it was just another song for the album. It wasn't really, the whole process of making it, we weren't really thinking too much about the Olympics because, like I said, it had all gone quiet. Um, and it wasn't really until, I think we maybe had three or four songs finished and, and the Olympics then came back. And and they asked us, you know, if we had, a, they asked us to play the closing, but then they also asked us, do we have a song? You know, they they were looking for an, an official song or not just from us, but from other bands as well. And obviously, you know, survival because of the lyrical content and just the general drama of the song we felt could work, you know, and um, and we played it to them and they loved it, you know. So I, w- I wouldn't say it was necessarily written for the Olympics. I think it maybe had a small influence on it, but I think you can you can read into those lyrics and you can you can interpret them on a much darker level, or you can interpret it as a as an Olympic song, you know. But either way, I think it's a song that would have would have been on the album regardless of the Olympics, you know. Mrs. Jones, were you inspired by the closing ceremony and will it influence any of the Muse tour? Maybe, maybe it will. Um, I mean, the thing that blew us away more than anything was obviously the, the sheer amount of acts that was going on on that day. And uh, it was so chaotic during the daytime. We had uh, we had a very, very quick run through just before doors opened and, and it was absolute chaos. You know, all the bands were kind of running in different directions and not really knowing what was going on. And there was people trying to, to clean up the stadium and... I've got to be honest, I thought something would go wrong because I think we were supposed to have a full dress dress run through that day and things things ran on late and it, it didn't happen for whatever reason. And um and then obviously by the time it started it actually turned to turned into one of the most amazing shows ever and we were after we played we, we stayed behind the stage and we watched the rest of the show and uh, you know, just all the fireworks that were going off and you know, those those pixel things that they had that all the crowd held up. Um I think that's something we could be interested in. <laughs> you know, I think that would be quite a cool thing to have, um, you know, to use the, the audience as a video screen. You know, I think that would be very, very cool. But, you know, looking at, you know, obviously I went to uh, a bit of the Olympics. I saw saw two hours on the, the, the last Thursday. 
and I was looking at the way the pixels were set up in the in the seats, and obviously somebody's had to physically connect every single screen. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's realistic to do at a gig every day, I don't know. I mean, it looks like something that would probably take weeks to put together. Mm -hmm. But but I think things like that, you know, having some kind of crowd participation is something that we've always been really interested in, and. You know, we've always had the uh, the balloons that we throw out. You know, and it's just a way of getting the crowd involved in the show. And uh, you know, the pixel the pixel things that they had, I think, would be a really cool thing to to use at a gig. Mm. But I think I think anything like that, where you actually get the crowd as part of the show, is just a it's just a really cool thing to do. You know, rather than just separate yourself from the crowd all the time.